y'all. Welcome to my shop. Uh, today we're going to turn a shawl pin and it makes a great gift, great craft show item. Let's get started. So what we need today is a blank about three quarters of an inch or so thick, you know, depending on how large feature it's going to be. Oh, maybe five inches long, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I've got a, a block of cherry because it's what I had on hand that's dried. It's about three inches or 75 millimeters across. When we finish with a shawl ring it's going to be somewhere between two and a half to two, th two and three quarters of inches uh, across. So we're going to mount this block initially between the centers. I marked the center on one side, the other side I'm just going to line up visually and make some minor adjustments. And I think that'll do it. Okay. Turn this between centers. I could use a spindle roughing gouge, bowl gouge, whatever. I'm going to happen to use a 5 8 inch spindle gouge because I want to get more, more familiar with it. I haven't gotten much use out of it yet. simply going to mount the block and then face it off. You can face this off with a lot of tools, but I like to use this uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a very steep, steep grind because it seems to be fairly aggressive and does a great job. But you certainly don't need to go to this, you don't need this specialty tool to make a of blank. If I was using a cross grain piece, I would probably mount it on something something like this, uh, uh, face this off and gl glue it on. But I'm going to use end grain. I think this cherry is going to be strong enough. It's got some figure in it. It looks pretty in it. But uh, I think either one will work. We're going to make this about uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. So we just about got it where we want it to be. And it's finishing out at... almost two and three quarters. The inside diameter I wanted an inch and a half. Let's go ahead and measure measure that. Make a couple of concentric rings to know that I can measure and know whether I got it right or not. Yeah, that's pretty much on the money. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take out some of that middle. I'll do that with a spindle gouge. I think that'll be the fastest way. If this is in grain, we're gonna cut from the middle. It doesn't make any, really make any difference. It's like hollow in the box. to roll over the edge 
and round over the outside edge. No. Too much. Too much in there. Well, that wasn't pretty. See, that wasn't pretty at all, so I've got to go back and clean that up. Not sure what I was doing there. I wasn't paying attention, I think. Okay, I've cleaned that up. Now let's go back and round over a little bit more here. I'm going to sand this off camera and we'll come back. I'm going to sand it up to about 600 grit. Okay, I've got this sanded up to 600 and also used some abrasive paste, so that just about like doubles or triples of grit. I want to make this uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. I want to give myself a little bit of room for sanding, so I'm just going to mark where I'm going to part down. And I'll go just to the left of that. I'm going to use a, a fluted uh, thin parting tool. It's got a long handle. That longer handle gives me a little more leverage on a blank that's uh, almost three inches thick. I'm going to slow the speed down a bit to oh, maybe a thousand or so. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, and just ease it in. Give myself a little extra room there. While it's on here, I think I'm going to go ahead and just nip that corner here just a little bit. And it'll make sanding a little finish sanding a little easier, I think. Okay. Go ahead and hit that with a few grits of sandpaper. A little 340. Back to parting this off. Chase it across the across the floor. I'm happy happy with the appearance of that. I'll uh, hit this over with a belt sander and then take it down to a hand sand it down to multiple multiple grits up to 600. And now for a bit of hand sanding on the inside edges. There's a lot of good ways to sand this, but I think the easiest way for me is to use a mandrel. Uh, chucked up with my collet, collet chuck and work the back of this. This is easier and safer and control the speed better than on my uh, spindle sander. Oscillating rigid sander. And for all the grits up to 600. I'm using a record power live center there. Coronet uh, Herald, it's got interchangeable tips. It's got a 90 degree tip will, which will support the end of this and I think keep it from moving but won't really do any serious damage. It's, it's kind of an unusual tip and it can be really handy for some things. Just bump that over just a little bit. Stick to that center. Now we've got it. And I'm using my, my pin jaws over here to, to hold this, this blank. First thing we're going to do is, is get it get around, and this will be the tip of it. This will be the decorative end. So I'll go back to roughing this out with my 5 8 inch spindle gouge instead of a roughing gouge, just because it's handy. Right Not sure what kind of wood this is. The 
end of this, I need to get down to almost an eighth of an inch. The other part of it is probably about five millimeters. All right, let me get a sense of where we are here. Again, the thickest part here that goes through the material and through the ring is I want it to be, oh gosh, I've got a ways to go, it's 12, I need to get it down to about about 5. Uh, let me just kind of hold the ring up there so we can see what we've, what we've got. So it, to come through here and stick over just a little bit, so right about here is going to be, be the end of it. I swear, these pencils all run and hide. I don't understand. Okay, so I want to get it down to probably close to there before I hit the feature. Okay, right there. And I'm going to not worry about this till I get this down because I want to leave as much mass here as possible. But I can come down right here. getting a little bit chattery. Let me kind of support it with my finger and switch to a little smaller gouge. I'm striving for. Oh, we've still got a ways to go. It's up to around seven or eight. I may switch over to a skew for this planing cut here. I think I'll go back and forth, come back and clean up this end at the very end. to five, four here, and five here, so all I gotta do is just keep taking it down, and I'll be fine. Before I release this, I think I probably wanna do a little sanding. Okay, so now we're gonna start this feature. sanding and then we'll finish up this tip. Alright, time for time for me to get this uh, this little bitty three millimeter point. So I'm gonna gotta support this very carefully. Take very light cuts. My fingers acting as a steady rest. I think I can deal with 
rest of that was sanding. Uh, I think I can pitch sand that a little bit, but I'll do that starting off with some 240, or rather some 320. I can deal with that on the mandrel without any problem, so I'm not going to get too crazy with that. Uh, I think I will hit it with some, pitch sand it with some 500 grit here. Alright, now I'm trying to decide what kind of feature I want here to get this in my head. I think I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more. It's down there, oh, seven eighths of an inch. Three eighths inch spindle gouge for this feature on the end. Turn it around. Don't want it too thick. Exotic, this is a very hard wood. Get down in there. I've even got to use a skew or a detail gouge, and I think I'm going to use a detail gouge. A little quarter inch with a with kind of a point, point that allows me to get down in there. Not quite as well as a skew, but with a little more confidence. I'm liking that. Take it down just a bit more on this end and I'll be, be able to start sanding. I'm going to use a round skew and just come in there and see if I can't smooth that profile. Okay, the fun part, parting it off, I'm going to use a skew, get rid of some of this material and bring it around, and then I'll decide what I'm going to use afterwards. Just give myself some clearance room here. Take it off. I think I'm going to use some abrasive paste on the whole thing. These wax concoction with a little bit of fine grit in it. And this will shine like a new penny. Oh yeah. Get the speed up a little bit. Now let's finish parting it off. This is not Coca Bolo, but it's something, something almost as hard and almost as pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to use. Oh, 
like this. Well, that's awkward. And this is awkward. Just a tiny little nib there that I can cut off and, and sand, I think. Just cut it off and skew. As you can go back, oh yeah, that skew is sharp. Sharpest tool in the shed. Okay. Alright, let's put that mandrel back on there, finish sanding. Alright, got the mandrel back up there. I'm gonna start with a little 180 grit. And just get rid of that little teensy little bit at the end. Gotta be careful because 180 grit's pretty pretty aggressive on something like this. It's the 240. I'm gonna slow the speed down a little bit. Move to the center where the RPM is slower. Got more control. 400. And then I think I will hand sand 500, 600. Still needs a few more coats of Minwax. Wipe on polyurethane. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments. Y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?